Well, it's rare that we have local college basketball to talk about this late into April, but the recruiting equation has suddenly grown more complicated for Quincy University this offseason. Marty Bell confirmed to KHQA this afternoon that his team is losing both big man Jens Kennedy, who you see here, and guard Jeffrey Hartlieb, Hartlieb, I should say, to transfers. Both played somewhat sparingly this season, but were coveted gets at the time of their signings and players with futures within the program. Kennedy has already made a decision as to his future and according to their website is signed with the NAIA school up in Joliet St. Francis. The new recruiting math given these departures shows QU with three scholarships now to give going forward. Let's do some baseball today. John Wood traveling to HLG's JV today on the hill. Oswald Silvestri off to a great start in the bottom of the first inning with not one but two strikeouts. He got a little help behind the plate as well from his backstop Christian Bunch and that's a bunch of good powerful arm right there throwing out the intended base runner and getting out of the jam. In the top of the second it would be the Blazers going back to work. Greg Wathen's team didn't lack for run support today. In support of Oswald Silvestri, Mark Carpenter with the RBI rip right here. That got things going a little bit later in the frame to extend a 5 0 lead. This is Nay Seldom Ridge going the other way with one to deposit a couple of RBIs as well. John Wood ends up winning this game today by the final count of 13 to 6. Same two teams back up in Quincy, I believe, coming up tomorrow. Elsewhere on the college docket today, HLG's varsity team didn't fare very well on the road at Benedictine Springfield, dropping a pair 5 to 3 in the first game and in the second game losing 9 to 2. The one bright spot in that contest, Western High product, Keaton Baker went two for three with a run scored in that ball game. Tough day for Western Illinois, which got the Grizzly Man treatment from Oakland, losing a pair today, five to one in the first game. The second game wasn't much prettier. Four to two was your final on that one. Better news for the HLG softball team today, which swept a pair from visiting Harris Stowe. Kachina Hudson, the Mark Twain product, with a shutout in game number one and five strikeouts. She also got the victory in game number two, killing both ends of the doubleheader. Megan Becker also had a big day at the plate, had a couple of RBIs in the first game, and also went three for four in the second game with an RBI as well. High school softball, Quincy Notre Dame taking on undefeated Sacred Heart Griffin. Q and D up two to nothing after a couple of first inning triples, protecting that lead in a jam right here. But look at the All-Stater, Cassidy Gangenbacher playing shortstop like a dream, pulling off the 6-3 double play to end the inning right there. Get her team out of the jam, and even Dad had a big fist pump for her at that point. More defense right here coming up from Jenny Pollock at third base. Another snifty catch right there to kind of snuff things out as SHG, undefeated as I mentioned, tried to rally. I believe they were 8-0 coming into this game. Ashley Wensing was having none of it. Strike out to end the thing. Eric Warren's team with a very impressive victory today at home in the backyard, knocking off SHG for the first time this season, 2 to nothing. I believe Q&D now 5-1 and one on the season. Other scores, just kind of a limited day of softball. Scores we had, Camp Point Central a one-run winner over Petersburg Porta, and Grigsville Perry gets the deed done today against Jacksonville Route. Look at the day Peyton Bonds had. Four for four at the plate, a triple, a couple of RBIs, and a couple of runs scored. That's some serious doing. Good for her, and nice win for Grigsville Perry, which is starting to get a little bit hot on the softball diamond. How about on the baseball diamond? Grigsville Perry coming off a big win over Pittsfield yesterday. Brown County, though, having none of it. Top of the first inning, Brady Long with the long sack fly here to score the speedy Braxton Phelps. That made it one to nothing. Nathan McDara on the mound didn't need much more. He was flat dealing in this game. Had Grigsville Perry's number 12 strikeouts in all for the big fella as he was pitching and getting well supported early on in this game. Michael Scoggin about to step to the plate right here with uh, bases loaded at this point. That is a two run single for him at that point. Plates two extends the lead out to three to nothing. We're not done. McDara in his own cause. We'll call this a single with an air at the back end of it. Scored another run at that point. Made it at that point a 5 to nothing lead. Grigsville Perry comes back, chips away, gets a couple of runs to get back into the game a little bit. But Brown County gets a nice road victory. 5-2 to two your final on that one. Brown County showing out against Illini West tomorrow. Grigsville Perry, a big one, a doubleheader conference-wise with West Hancock. Hope to have highlights of that one for you tomorrow on the Big Overtime Show. How about the Western Wildcats? Great win at home today over Beardstown. Noah Lynch, one of the hottest hitters in the area, continues his streak today. Goes two for four at the plate with a couple of ribbies to lead his team to, as I said, a quality home victory. Quincy Notre Dame with a quality road victory as the Raiders go to Troy Buchanan over in Missouri. Win that game four to one. Zach Bailey did it all today. Had three hits at the plate, got the pitching victory, and struck out eight Troy batters in the process. That's none too shabby. Speaking of none too shabby, speaking of guys who are red hot, Grant Volrath today with another big home run, this time a grand slam. He and Kyle Fulton grand slams and back-to-back -back innings. Volrath was the game winner in this one. 
or at least secured the 10 run rule as Monroe City gets the win there 16 to 3 over Unity. Marion County jumps all over Highland in this one 20 to 5. And yes, my man Nolan Ryan, not that Nolan Ryan, not the Ryan Express, the other one from Philadelphia got the big win on the hill today, was well supported at the plate. Lots of guys with uh, big hitting days in that one. Uh, so good stuff there for Marion County, which kind of breaks out a little bit. So too Knox County. Nice day for them as the Eagles beat North Shelby six to nothing behind a pitching gem from Donovan Edwards. Other scores in the day. We had some soccer today. Central League gets uh, trashed today, or I should say thrashed today by uh, Fort Madison. Seven to two was your final on that one. Braxton Williams, three goals in the first half, four on the day. That's quality scoring as the Bloodhounds get the win seven to two there. In golf today, Hannibal continues to be almost unbeatable on the links. Uh, Eric, or excuse me, Alec Abel leading the way in that one today with medalist honors with 37 over at Monroe City. And finally, the Quincy tennis team struggling a bit against Metamora, as you see there, nine to nothing was your finals. We mentioned earlier in the day the Cardinals, their struggles continue at the plate and against particularly Barry Zito, losing a one to nothing decision to the Giants today in San Francisco. Also, Kansas City breaks out, gets a big win over Philadelphia. Hey, we're all out of time here. Huge overtime coming up tomorrow. Lots of baseball, softball, and other goodies right here at 1030. We give you the full 30 minutes of local sports. We'll see you then, everybody, for the weekend's most complete wrap-up.